natural resources, land, soil and water. Natural resources are crucial for economic development of a region or a country. Distribution of resources of various types in the world is highly uneven. As a result, great variations are observed in the levels of development not only among different countries but also within a country. Study at a glance. Conservation, land resources, physiographic division of India, soil resources and water resources. Land resources. We all live on the land and all our needs are fulfilled through it. Land provides us with food, shelter and it is used for mining, construction of roads, railways etc. We find a variety of landforms on the surface and these landforms vary in shape and size. Thus, landforms are divided on the basis of size and shape. They are mountains, plateaus and plains. Mountains We can list out some important features of mountains. They control the climate and many high mountains are the abode of snow. A great variety of vegetation flourishes on the mountains and it is also home to many a wild life. Mountains also provide scenic beauty. Why is the population less in mountainous regions than in plains? It is because the mountainous regions are either too rocky or the climate too dry, too hot, too wet or too cold. These rugged and steep slopes of the mountains and extreme climate conditions impose restrictions on land for human use. Do you know which areas in the world are sparsely populated? Sparsely populated areas mostly include the deserts and grasslands of Asia and Africa, tropical forests of South America, Africa, and southeast, etc. Some of the important mountains and mountain ranges in the world the Rockies and Andes in the North and South America. In Asia, the Himalaya Kingan and Yabloni are the main mountain ranges. Plateaus the next type of landform is plateaus. What is a plateau? Plateaus are table lands. They are the raised blocks of land with flat surfaces. Now we can list out certain features of plateaus. Most of the plateaus of the world are rich in minerals and forest resources. Some plateaus are known for plantation. Some of the important plateaus of the world are as follows. Brazilian plateau, which is known for coffee plantation. Indian plateaus are rich in mineral resources. Example, Deccan plateau, Chota Nagpur plateau, etc. Plateaus of Tibet, Australia, Arabia and Africa. Plains. Plains are the most fertile area 
among mountains and plateaus. Why are the plains more densely populated than plateaus and mountains? Because most of the plains are drained by rivers and they are the cradles of human civilizations. The plains provide most favorable conditions for agriculture and human settlement. In the plains, soil is very fertile, which is good for cultivation. Some of the important plains of the world are the following. Prairie Plains of North America and Pampas of Argentina. The vast steppe lands. Nile Valley Plains. Huangho and Yangtze Kiang Plains on the Great Plains of India. Land Use What are the different purposes for which land is used? Land is used for different purposes such as cultivation of crops, grazing of animals, building houses and roads, mining and manufacturing. This is commonly termed as land use. Now, we can list out certain factors that influence land use pattern of a country or a region at a given time. Physical factors such as topography, soil, climate, availability of water and mineral resources determine the probable use of land. Economic and human factors are also important. Can you list certain serious problems that are created by careless use of land? Shortage of crop lands. Soil erosion. Desertification. Conservation of land and soil. Here we will have a close look on the conservation of soil and the means for conserving the soil. It is very necessary to protect soil from erosion. Otherwise, it becomes unproductive, barren and infertile. We can adopt the following methods to conserve soil. Afforestation one of the most effective method for conserving soil is planting more trees. The roots of trees thus planted hold the soil particles together and reduce soil erosion. Terrace farming On the hills, conservation of terraces like steps or stair can prevent soil erosion. In this way, the speed of the flowing water is reduced and there is less soil erosion. Contour Plowing Technique of plowing parallel to the contours of a hill slope rather than up and down the slope so as to reduce soil erosion. Strip Cropping Growing of different crops on parallel narrow strips of ground, usually following the contour patterns. Shelter bells. In dry regions, rows of trees are planted to check the wind movement for protecting soil cover. Construction of check dams. Soil erosion can be checked by constructing check dams. It helps to prevent the speed of gullies. Mulching The bare ground between plants is covered with a layer of organic matter like straw. It helps to retain soil moisture. Contour barriers Stones, grass, soil are used to build barriers along contours. Trenches are made in front of the barriers to collect water. 
nature of the land nature of land is one of the important factors for soil erosion clay soil can absorb water easily hence soil erosion is much less in clay soil soil erosion by water is also much less on sandy soils gully erosion the erosion of soil and other poorly consolidated sediments by ephemeral that is short lived streams producing network of steep sided channels is called gully erosion nearly 40 lakh hectares of land in the country have already been degraded due to gully erosion gully erosion is prevalent in the states of uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar rajasthan and gujarat physiographic division of india when we talk about india we have diversified physical features now let us look out on the different physical features of india northern part of india has a lofty mountain range the himalayas it extends from jammu and kashmir to arunachal pradesh a large part of himalayas is under permanent snow himalayas are the source of many rivers flowing in india on the basis of their altitude the himalayas are divided into shivalik the middle himalayas and the greater himalayas mount ketu mount goodwin austin is the second highest mountain peak in the world which is located in jammu and kashmir in the northern himalayas to the south of the himalayas there is a vast stretch of relatively flat surface called the northern plains or great indian plains do you know how these plains are formed these plains are formed by the deposition of alluvium brought by rivers flowing from the himalayas the plains extend from punjab to assam these plains are drained by a number of rivers like the satluj bias and ravi on the west ganga yamuna and other supporting rivers of ganga in the middle and brahmaputra and its tributaries in the east we all know that india is a peninsula which means all the three sides of southern india are covered by water the peninsula part of india is largely covered with a plateau this peninsular plateau is the oldest block of india the northern part is called malwa plateau and it continues up to chota nagpur plateau the deccan plateau lies to the south of vindhyas and is bound by eastern ghats and the western ghats the deccan plateau is flanked by narrow coastal plains the west coastal plain and the east coastal plain the western part of rajasthan is a great indian desert india has two major island groups that is andaman and nicobar island group in the bay of bengal and the lakshadweep island group in the arabian sea soil formation do you know how soil is formed the soil is a renewable resource The process of soil formation is extremely slow. The soil is formed by physical, 
chemical and organic changes which go on taking place continuously in the layer. Soil formation is controlled by five factors. Climate, nature of the weathered particles, topography, time and soil profile. Factors of Soil Formation Climate The soil forming process takes place more rapidly during high temperature and high rainfall. Nature of the Weathered Particles Weathered particles may be obtained from the weathering of rocks or deposition of materials by rivers, winds, or other gradational agents. The physical and chemical composition of these particles determines the relative proportions of different minerals in the soil layer. Topography Topography of a region also affects the formation of soils. Steep slopes usually have thin soil due to erosion. Thick fertile soils are developed in the valleys and low lands. Topography controls the state of moisture in the soil layers. Time A rich and fertile soil is formed only when the weathered particles of rocks remain undisturbed at one place for a long time. It is only over a long span of time that the action of physical, chemical and organic processes takes place and leads to the formation of deep and well-developed layers one below the other. Soil Profile each type of soil has a well-developed vertical section called the soil profile. The top layer consists of fine particles and organic matter from decayed plants and organisms. The second layer is a layer of subsoil soil erosion. Now let us study the meaning of soil erosion and the factors responsible for it. The denuding action of weathering, water, wind, etc. on the soil is called soil erosion or in other words moving away of the top soil by the agents of gradation like running water, glaciers, wind, etc. is known as soil erosion. Factors of soil erosion. Now we can list out some of the factors which cause soil erosion. They are deforestation, heavy and torrential rain, overgrazing, winds, slope of the land. Deforestation How can deforestation cause soil erosion? When trees are cut down recklessly, nothing can check the speed of running water. So, deforestation causes soil erosion. Another factor that causes soil erosion is heavy and torrential rain where it carries away the fine soil particles with it due to its great speed and erosive capacity. Overgrazing Soil is eroded due to overgrazing especially by cows, goats and sheep. Plants which conserve soil are uprooted and soil erosion takes place. It generally happens in hills. 
winds. When the winds blow violently, they carry away several millions of tons of soil dust with them. Their action is more powerful in deserts and semi-desert regions. Slope of the land Water runs with great speed if the slope is steep. Then the soil erosion is greater due to the fast speed of running water. Another factor that causes soil erosion is heavy and torrential rain where it carries away the fine soil particles with it due to its great speed and erosive capacity. Water Resources We all know that water is essential for all forms of life. Do you know why Earth is called the Blue Planet? About three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. 71% As such, the Earth appears blue from space and hence called the Blue Planet. Now we can list out the different sources of water. There are large water bodies like oceans, seas, lakes, streams, rivers, fresh water, ground water, etc. These are the different sources of water on earth. Conserving water and improving its quality. The major contaminants of water are bacteria and parasites, chlorinated hydrocarbons, volatile hydrocarbons, lead, salt hardness, and iron. The use of pesticides in some way or the other is hazardous to people as they are not biodegradable. Water is contaminated with hydrocarbons by oil spills, leaking petrol and diesel tanks and cleaning fluids that are flushed down the drains. Iron contamination and hard water are more serious problem for industrial activities and electricity generation. Besides these problems, there are certain methods to conserve water. Now, we can list out some methods to conserve water. Rainwater Harvesting Methods for keeping the rainwater in reserves are termed as Rainwater Harvesting. Do you know? Rainwater can be stored in the tank for three to five years, making it a regular source of drinking water. Rainwater, polar pani, is the purest form of natural water. It is often used to cure ailment of sick people. Many houses are built near the tank to keep the house or rooms cool in summer. Watershed Development Watershed is the basin of a tributary of a main river. Sprinkle Irrigation It is the most effective and efficient tool of irrigation. Drip or Trickle Irrigation This is another type of irrigation which is used to conserve water. Water is supplied to plant roots through underground pipes. Fresh water. When we take 71% of the earth's surface, which is covered by water, only 3% of it is fresh water. Fresh water is easily available and is suitable for human use.
it is found as ground water as surface water in rivers and lakes and as water vapor in the atmosphere fresh water is continuously being renewed and recharged through hydrological cycle do you know from where fresh water is obtained surface run off ground water can you say what surface water is it is the overland flow of rain water the surface run off from a large area gets collected in the form of small streams which unite together to make big rivers the area drained by a big river along with its small streams tributaries is called a river basin surface water resources include water in the rivers and the reservoirs water in the lakes ponds and tanks water in the seas and water in the oceans now let us understand what is underground water resource it includes water which has become underground through percolation or seepage and is lying in the porous rock above the in porous rocks water resources india here we will study the distribution of water resources in our country india india receives a good amount of rainfall but the distribution of rainfall is highly uneven about 20% of the rainwater is lost by evaporation and nearly 30% seeps below the ground many parts of india face acute shortage of water even for domestic use in india large volume of water is used for irrigation as it is necessary to raise crops india has many perennial rivers like satluj bias indus ganga yamuna and brahmaputra here we came across perennial rivers what do you mean by perennial rivers perennial rivers are those rivers where we can obtain water regularly throughout the year india has developed many hydro power projects to generate hydro electricity of which bhagran nangal project hirakud project and kosi project are the important ones utilization of water resources we all use water for numerous purposes we can list out certain uses of water drinking bathing and washing irrigation industries navigation generation of hydel power fishing and numerous other purposes like sewage disposal for urban areas etc landslides landslides are defined as the mass movement of rock debris or earth down a slope they often take place in conjunction with earthquakes floods and volcanoes a prolonged spell of rainfall can cause heavy landslide that can block the flow of river for quite some time the formation of river blocks can cause havoc to the settlements downstream on its bursting mitigation mechanism advancement in scientific techniques has empowered us to understand what factors cause landslides and how to manage them 
Some broad mitigation techniques of landslide are as follows. Hazard mapping locates areas prone to landslides. Hence, such areas can be avoided for building settlements. Construction of retention wall to stop land from slipping. Increase in the vegetation cover is an effective way to arrest landslide. The surface drainage control works are implemented to control the movement of landslide along with rainwater and spring flows. Summary The three natural resources are land, soil and water. Human being and most living organisms live on land. Land has various features like mountains, plateaus and plains. India has varied land features. Soil supports plant life and is a primary resource. Soil formation is controlled by five factors. Soil can be conserved by developing certain methods. Nearly 71% of our earth is under water and it is an indispensable resource. Not all the water available to us is fresh water. Moreover, the distribution of fresh water is also highly uneven as fresh water depends upon the amount of precipitation, snowfall and glacier of a particular region. Quality of water is affected adversely when the impurities in water exceed such permissible limits that can be tolerated by living organisms. Rainwater harvesting Watershed development Sprinkle irrigation Drip irrigation are some of the methods of conserving water.